Welcome back. You're watching Standpoint. And it seems that we won't be breaking away from uh, the cycle of the gloom and doom as far as the economy is concerned. It seems every day we are waiting for the other shoe to drop. And now the economy has slid into a dangerous territory. On defaults, non-performing loans has hit a 16-year high at of 14.9%, almost 15%. The stocks, that is the Nairobi Security Exchange, has shed 26% or 653.7 billion shillings in only six months. Inflation still skyrocketing. It stays above the 7.5% target for 13th straight month. It has been rising steadily. And if we look at some of the illustrations that we've been given here on the front page of a business daily, quarter one, the gross domestic product growth slowed to 5.3%. Loan rate, that is up to 13.2% in only May, shilling has fallen dismally at 15% since the year began. Right now, it's shedding, it's actually at 141.26 against the dollar. Unemployment rate now stands at 13.9%. And of course, we've seen the youth of Exodus in the country. What does this really portend right now for Kenyans? From last year, of course, they were, they were given the bellwether about how things will be tight in 2023 and now we are feeling the heat and that's why many kenyans as it is right now are in the streets protesting the cost of living but that has been coupled with politics as it is and how do we uncouple the face of Raila from the politics of the day we're discussing this with our panelists we continue our pace with farah malim who's looking at also what is happening in the coffee sector uh briefly and then we shall also just try and decipher this as well uh, where we are in uh, in a dangerous territory for Mali. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I told you, I, I, uh, <coughs> we were looking at the coffee sector in this country, and I told you, 30 years ago, we were producing over 142,000 metric tons. 30 years later, we are producing 45,000 metric tons per year, annually. Eh? From 142. From 142, 30 years ago. Uganda, which was way below us now, is over 400,000 metric tons a year. Is what they're producing because they kind of liberalize their own coffee sector there to the extent that the farmer, the farmer, the grassroots, has a certain say. Here, because the political class has bought into the cartel, mm -hmm. the political class is the cartel. Our coffee sells for as much as $12 by the kilo, to kilo, $8 to the kilo. And our farmers get less than 30 cents in some cases to the kilo. And they cannot sell to whoever they want. They are restricted by, 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 by the regulations. The coffee farmer in Ethiopia gets over $3 to the kilo. When the coffee farmer in Western Kenya, by the way, Western Kenya, they're getting 25 shillings to the kilo. 25 Kenya shillings to the kilo. That's less than 20 cents, US cents to the kilo. So we, we, we say in our language, a, a nation which is, has, is under state capture by its top leadership, top, top leadership. And, 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 and we say in my language, a camel is not stolen by the owner. How do you find them? They're stolen by the owner. The, the owner has stolen them, so they actually qualify for having been stolen. The, the owner has stolen them, and he places them somewhere, and instead of going to where that, he has placed them, he tells you, let's look for it in West, when he knows they're stuck in the East. So we have a political leadership which keeps on sending us all on a wild goose chase all the time, when they're robbing their own country dry, starting from top. Where did the Eurobond go? Where's the money of the Eurobond? A million dollars out of that it never even came to this country. And, and, and then look at, look at the cooking oil, monopoly. Milk sector, monopoly. Oil sector, progressively going towards monopoly. Those subsidies, the majority of those subsidies went to a company that is owned by a top, top leader in the country. Timber, the same thing. That's why our forests are getting destroyed. That's why we, we appoint the chairmanship of the, of, of the, of what they call the Kenya Forestry, uh, bo, whatever. Can I first, can I first, uh, yes, coming. yes, yes. A top, a top, what do you call uh, uh, operator in that who is actually in a leadership with the, with, in, in partnership with the, with the, <laughs> with the top, top political leadership.
So this country has been taken cooking gas, fuel, everything. Kenya Airways is gone dead because we allowed the top leadership of the country to go and bring in their own embrayers and everything else and everything else. So the money was going straight into the pockets of that side. So a nation being robbed by its own top political decision-making leadership day in, day out from the first time we got independence until today. With a little bit of a respite during Kibaki's second term. Not the first time, by the way. We, we got a bit of a break in Kibaki's second term. <laughs> How do you save that population? How do you bring down the cost of living there? Where the opposition leadership is robbed in is also part of that. If all, all these handshakes you see and all these collisions people are making, it's saying, no, no, let's not fight of it. We can share it between ourselves. And that is the crude manner in which politics has been transacted in this country for the longest. So unless we, we don't have a livestock, a, livestock, a, a livestock development authority in this country for the longest, we don't have it today. We used to have Kenya Meat Commission during the colonial time, which used to protect the livestock, the meat farmers and the beef farmers in, in the north and all these other pastoral areas during the colonial time. We don't have it now. Mm -hmm. It's been taken to the military because it's easier to steal it through the military. Yes. You, you, you get my point? So, so, so basically, we, we, we have a problem. And unless we're able to deal with that problem, look, why is our shilling taking this powerful slide? Do you know why our shilling is taking this powerful heat? Kibaki for the longest, and Dungo when he was the governor of Central Bank those days used to say, don't touch the Somali business community because the shilling was saved by the remittances from outside the Hawala. Hundreds of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars used to come into our economy. At the worst time in the 90s, you know what I mean? When, when, we, when we, were, we, we had a problem with the World Bank, with the IMF and the rest of it, and still our shilling was strong. But because they came into in, in real estate and other areas and, and what do you call importation of the oil, 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 cooking oil and the rest of it, there was direct confrontation between the top political leadership. Thank you. And those businessmen, Thank you. They, they were, life was made impossible for them and they had to relocate. They relocated to Uganda, they relocated to, to what do you call uh, Tanzania, they relocated to uh, Egypt, uh, sorry, uh, Istanbul. That is where Turkey, Turkey. And, and that's why those economies of our neighbors are now coming up. And I warned again, I said, from four years ago, don't touch this, don't touch this. Nobody listened to me through the carrier and everything else. And, and now it, the, these two other countries are overtaking us at the speed faster than anything else. I'm talking about Tanzania and Uganda. So this country has been destroyed by none other than that top leadership. Thank you. L let me just come to you. Uh Horrible Makali, looking just at the political economy as it is, because we, we had a projection recently from uh, the Kenya Bureau of Statistics. I that didn't talk about the sugar, but I'll talk yeah, about the sugar We'll talk later. about the sugar later, yes. because uh, there's a, a move from government that has stopped now even the millers from producing. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So they want to give a leeway for the farmers to grow their canes as well. But I want us just to focus on this uh, projection that the GDP has grown as the highest. At, was it 5.3% uh, since... Since now the declining of it, we've seen the highest um, upping nice. of, the, of, the, of the GDP as it is. But looking at what we have on the front page of uh, the business daily, uh, that we're in a dangerous territory. Mm -hmm. What does this really portend? When it comes to unemployment, we've, we've seen uh, Honbo Sige talking about uh, the, the, the employment of teachers as well, so we can uh, have a, a very sanguine and optimistic outlook of the employment rate in this country. But the reflection here is completely diametrically different from what he's selling. 13.9%. And we have a youth now opting to go outside the country. Uh, the government even aiding uh, the youth and encouraging the youth to go out of the, outside of the country to look for jobs. Yeah, what, what is a true reflection of the economy? Because when, yeah. we, we, when we look at the GDP, it's not giving a true reflection of what the economy is. It's mm. just a statistic, but the reflection mm. in the pocket is... That's why they're saying <laughs> going for the gross domestic uh, product uh, you know, you know, as a metric of <laughs> gauging the economy of a country is, is not the wisest way to do mm. it. You know, you know the bar. <laughs> this way we, we always say that uh, it's good to listen to professionals. Uh, you know the way we do economic projections is first of all you look at the international economy and informed by the international economy you're able to, to, to project the local economy. And, uh, and we've said, and this has been said many times, and that's why I get uh, worried when I hear Senator Mungatana saying it's like there has been no alternative uh, kind of uh, policy direction from Azimio. Actually, Azimio has been articulating a lot of issues. It's only that I don't think people take time to, to, to listen to us. For example, Dibao, 
we have said when you look at the economic fundamentals things which you must analyze for you to determine how the economy will perform we have said this economy is likely to stabilize in two years as Mudavadi was saying that's the truth of the matter so if you want to get this economy where it should be there is always that time which you can't change for example it is obvious that when the international economy is not performing well and Kenya relatively has been performing well compared to international uh, economic growth what is happening in the fundamental for example in inflation if you look at our projections between either minus 2.5 plus or minus 5 which means the expectation is the highest we should go in terms of inflation is 7.5 percent currently for the last almost 13 months we have been above that what does that mean that means so long as inflation is high then interest rates will also become high to control inflation and normally what happens now when you increase interest even this idea of uh, credit accessibility will be interfered with because when interests are high then borrowing becomes expensive you will not be able to access the loans government will start now competing for the little resources which are around in the economy mm -hmm. with the private sector uh, government is a more liable borrower than the private sector so people uh, the, any, any lender will give the money to the government the private sector will be staffed of resources so economic growth is in the field but what is really the question you're asking is gdp is just a, a figure like another figure mm -hmm. And uh, I remember at one point somebody was saying, uh, what are cool in GDP? <laughs> the basic is. So, so, so to me, what is important is bow. When, when you look at the, uh, and, and uh, we have a serious economist in, uh, in Kenya, Kwanza government who are advisors. And I think what is happening is just because of this uh, uh, casual uh, kind of approach to issues, I don't believe their advice has been listened to. I think they're just giving advice and uh, the advisors they remain advisors. And you, the good thing that an advisor is your advice, whether your advice is taken or not taken, that is not, not your business. You can advise and people just think, you know, your advice. The, at the end of the day, they are the, the final decision makers. But what is critical about? I want to give you a very a good example. Like, you know, you saw the other day we pushed uh, the issue of the, the debt acreage to, to, to become a percentage of the DP. Mm -hmm. And these are the, the arguments we were pushing. If we, we repay our debts with the revenue we collect. So if you want to really feel the, the problem with our debt, is to look at how much we are collecting and how much we are paying for debts. Because GDP is a broader figure. But at the end of the day, it's how much are we collecting and how much are we paying debts. The second important indicator is the export earnings. Because, you know, most of our, our debt is, is uh, denominated in foreign currency, either dollar or euros. So the other thing is, how are we performing in terms of our exports? Because we get dollars and we get those other foreign currencies through exportation of, of, of our goods. If you don't export either tourism services or whatever, you don't get the dollar. Mm -hmm. So you look at how much of our export earnings are we spending on repayment of debt? So, those two key indicators, we are already on the red. We have gone past the expected threshold mm -hmm. completely. So, out of the six indicators, mm -hmm. debt repayment, Kenya has already gone, has gone past four. We are only within now two. And these two is because of uh, uh, some other reasons. So, we are saying, from an economic perspective, what the projection you are giving there is very right that we are not doing well. Unemployment. You see what the, the figures you are showing. Mm -hmm. And this is, what, this is what the youth are saying when, any time you interact with them. Gentlemen, when you see us engaging in drug issues, taking a lot of alcohol, is to escape the problems you are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. I have I've finished my education. I have not been employed. I have a family which to be, needs to be fed. So anytime, anytime I take my BRO, I take those other things I take, I'm able to cool down and uh, be able to get some sleep. These are the issues. And that's what I was saying. These are the issues we'll be discussing other than uh, bring every, every matter. Raila wants power, wants power. Raila has never been a president of this country. For the last five attempts, he has never become the president. But this country is in serious economic issues. Like what you have portrayed there, inflation, interest rates, unemployment, all these are with us can now, us as leaders, discuss how do we bail our people out of these serious economic issues. And if you go that way, we'll be helping. For example, Dibao, let's take the issue of uh, the funding of the, the rallies, as you were saying earlier. And I want to remind, to remind my colleagues, because we are members of parliament, we have a political parties fund, 
which you budget for every year. This year, my party, which is now uh, one of the, the, I think the third largest, uh, the fourth largest, because you really have one more member than us, we, we, we are projected to get 70 million as a party from the political party's part, which is taxpayers' money. So, uh, ODM, in terms of number, is about three times us. So you can imagine how much ODM is going to get. You can imagine how much Jubilee will get. Now, with this kind of resources coming from the government, why would somebody think that 40 million is so much money to be given by Uru and the parties have already money within their, 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 in their accounts from the government? So, so this idea of just seeing everything being done that somebody out there is, is funding, it would only make sense if political parties had no money. We are already funding political parties as taxpayers. So they have money. So what is happening is the government is using money, government, taxpayers' money, to buy tear gas. They are using taxpayers' money to, 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 to get the big role and pay police. The, the op opposition is also using taxpayers' money if there is any funding coming, and I've never seen any. I'm a member of the opposition. Anytime I go for these things, I fuel my car. Anytime I carry my team, I, in case I have my security, I, never, I meet for the, for the expenses, including my driver. I, I've never been given money to be told, organize your people. I only go as an individual and I spend my own resources. So what we are saying is, at the end of the day, this money we are spending to do unnecessary things like throwing tear gas, giving allowances to policemen, buying bullets because they are not being used all over the place. Why can't we get to a round table, we sort that matter out, and now push this important resources Thank you. towards employment, towards improving uh, the economy, so that we grow and we help everybody. Thank you. These are the issues. And that's, that's what we're saying. At the end of the day, I can tell you for sure, uh, as Mio has very good alternative to what we are, we are happening, but we are not in government. So our work now is to criticize and give objective criticism of policies which have been implemented by, by the Kenya Kwanza government. All right. Yes. Honorable Mungatana, we can look at... Uh, that the issues that are being raised are uh, that even the purchasing uh, manager index shows that we are down 47.8 points only in June. It goes to show that the purchasing power parity is, uh, or the purchasing power of Kenyans has really gone down by that particular significant figure, almost 50%. That's how we've been adversely affected. You can couple that with the issue that KRA also has missed its target of... Um, it has actually collected 2.71 trillion shillings, missing 107 billion shillings. So it's not really hit its target according to its projection for this financial year as well. So what does that really pretend even for, for Kenya Kwanzaa administration with all these uh, ambitious projects that we have, but we don't have money to do it? Dibal, uh, I want us to interrogate those uh, figures of GDP. You know, the figures that uh, Business Daily is pushing there is that the GDP has slowed down to 5.3. But I'm looking at uh, the report of the Kenya's economic outlook from the African Development Bank. I'm just reading it. Their projection was that for the entire year in 2023, we were going to get uh, a GDP growth of 5.6%. That will be the highest in no, seven years, looking at the way no, it's been this dipping. this annual, yeah. for this year, 2023, the projection is that the growth would be 56 Now, the figures that are being given there by the Business Daily is for the first quarter, okay? The first quarter means the first four months of their projections, yeah? Now, if you're discussing one quarter, and the African Development Bank has given 5.6 as a growth for the entire four quarters of the, of the year, of the cycle, then we are saying that there are three other quarters. Before you pass a vote of saying that the economy is collapsing, it's not performing and whatever, we need to also put into these factors. One of the things they said was that uh, there was drought. Drought was a major factor that affected the growth in GDP. Now, rains have come. People have planted. In fact, uh, one of the reasons why we will not have any demonstrations in, a, in my county, Tana River County, people are busy. People are, pal are planting. People are in the, in the shambas. People are really busy right now. 
even for us who are uh, fairly well known political leaders for you to have a proper rally or a proper meeting you have to do your timings very well uh, otherwise you will call a meeting and there will be nobody for your meeting so people are busy right now so that factor of drought that was also affecting the growth of gdp in this first quarter is going to have a completely different outlook in the second quarter in the third quarter in the fourth quarter when the rains come production comes prices of goods are going to go down completely down the prices of maize i mean i i i was i was uh, i was in church yesterday and my pastor was saying for after a long time he's seeing the maize that he had no because every time he used to go to buy maize he likes green maize he says he said he would ask the traders they would say we are importing from tanzania but then now the maize he says is coming from kenya and as the harvests come in the prices of goods are bound to go down the prices of goods will go down the cost of food will go down and i have personally been telling our people even the ones who are living here in towns it will be a shame for this rainy season to go and you've not planted a single maize crop now if you've planted your maize after a while it will come three months uh, we normally have is three months to four months it will come that means you don't have to go buying stuff all the time in the supermarket even if you are living in town so i'm saying if you interrogate these uh, these figures they are figures that were taken at a time when things were extremely bad but i have said before that i'm very hopeful that we are doing the right thing we are getting some things right that's why members of parliament today you don't see them protesting and making a lot of uh, uh, objections because they have not received their their cdf their cdf has been paid we don't see governors making noise the money for governors has been paid county governments are now supposed to deliver and it is because president ruto is doing certain things well so the figures that the business daily is talking about are dated figures they are they, de they are depending on things that the figures and statistics that have happened in the past but i'm saying here on national tv that the projections are going to be better one of the factors that caused the problem was a drought the drought is gone mm -hmm. and production is increasing we are very hopeful yes that this country is going to better economic times and this is what our, uh, uh, our colleagues in the opposition don't want to talk about. They don't want to see. They don't want these things to come out. And I am afraid to say, my, my colleague here says that they, they have been giving alternative pro, uh, you know, uh, programs. I'm afraid to say no. The only program that they have had is Manda Man. They have never talked about anything. I've never seen them talk about anything reasonable. So Honorable Akali here is talking at this table something different, but the political leadership, when they stand there talking, let's go and let us blockade roads, let us make noise, let us do this, let us go to the streets, let us make the country ungovernable. ungovernable. Those are the words that their leaders are talking about. They are not telling us alternative Thank you. policies. So you cannot... You cannot, uh, you know, talk about economy at the, with the same mouth and talk about demonstration, mandamano, with the same mouth. I think these people are really anarchists. Anarchists are who don't recognize authorities. They don't want a central authority to, to govern things. So they want to do their own things. And a country can't run that Thank way. You. Thank you. I'm, I'm urging to... my colleagues to come up with proper alternatives. Let's sit down. Tell us this is wrong. We are going to improve the dollar using these methods. They don't have any ideas. Their only idea is mandamano. And it's because they are using a leader who is backdated, 30 years uh, in power, misleading them throughout. No people, brilliant minds like these are not in power. Brilliant minds like these are not in power. If these people are there, they would be engaging. They would be telling us, agriculture, you are failing. Mining sector is not doing well. Transport sector can be improved this manner. These people don't have this kind of leader. Right. The only Mugadana. leader they depend yeah. on is you. a backdated guy who is messing up this country. And we are saying this time, 
we are meeting you to make one year 18 and we are going to meet you where you are don't threaten us this country belongs to all of us outdated backdated everything should encourage me to to write a book you call it the jeremiah's of of mungatana but hongo mungatana yes when you talk about uh, africa development bank and the projection as well yeah. and what has been given as a true reflection of where the economy is uh we have the economist here will will tell you of the of the of the term setiras baribas yeah yes. setiras baribas <laughs> setiras baribas everything Remaining Setiris constant. Ceteris paribus. Yes, Ceteris Holding all factors constant. Yes, constant. Quarter one, Quarter one it is 5.3 GDP. Those are facts. But those, those are facts. Are facts. Yes. But I'm saying you was the purely speculative. No. Yeah, because we have demonstrations listen, with this projection spill. Quarter still one best. does not define four quarters. Okay? My argument and is And the four this. quarters are purely speculative. That is what I want no, you to just... Yeah, I'm because... I'm saying quarter, the four quarters will be 5.6. And I'm giving will you one... Be. No, I'm giving will you be. no the ball. I'm giving you this fact. That 5.3 is based on statistics that were you were justified by one of the things was drought, you know. High food costs, you know. Now we are saying in quarter 2 definitely it will change because food prices are going to go down. Thank you. The rains have come. Production is going to come therefore the prices are going to thank go you, down. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm saying at the end of it after the four quarters, we will definitely hit the African Development Bank, uh, you know, projection of 5.6 minimum. You. All right. Let's hear from uh, Honorable Sige on the issue of suppressed uh, revenue collection, deficit of 107 billion shillings. Yes. This is what uh, KRA has given that we have 2.71 trillion shillings, right, that has been collected so far and there's a deficit. They've not hit the target that Kenya Kwanzaa administration had put forward. How will this also affect operations? It will, uh, thank you, Debal. It's actually going to definitely affect our economy. And uh, I like what uh, Makali said earlier on, that uh, he acknowledges the fact that the president has got economists advising him. And it's actually true that uh, in the Kenya Kwanzaa, there are a team of economists who are advising the president on all or almost all uh, decisions which are being made within that particular sector. I wouldn't want to speak to figures. I'm not an economist like my colleague here, but uh, I am aware that the budget deficit, as you speak, from the Finance Act that was passed is 720 billion. That is the budget that we passed has got a deficit of 720. There were projections on borrowing both locally and also foreign. The local, I think, was uh, 520 something, foreign uh, 199. Now, within that deficit, Remember, as we speak, Dibal, we passed a financial bill into an act of parliament. Unfortunately, it was stayed by the court. The taxman is saying that with the freeze on the financial act, there is a possibility, and high possibility for that matter, that we are not going to meet the tax collection projections for the financial year, whether it's quarter one or two, even as, a, as we speak right now. Um, uh, I read somewhere that... Uh, with the freeze on the implementation of the act, we lose 24 billion that we are supposed to collect per day. So every other day that we are not allowed to implement the act, we are losing collection of 24 billion Kenya shillings. That 24 billion is good also to clarify that it was the projected collection. The, yes, because course, we yes, are using not the per day, sorry, per month. Those, per month. those yes, are the projected, projected collections. Yes. So it's so, not a true reflection on how it can stimulate the economy. If the Finance Act was there, then it, we, sh we should have seen a discernible difference it will have brought. Granted, yes. Granted that we are not doing very well as an economy. That one is a fact that no one among us whether it's leadership, the business community, or even the presidents, and even the opposition, we are not doing very well. But these projections, if I were to borrow the words that you've used, is going to be achieved if we were allowed to run the government and the programs as had been planned. But that does not mean that we are going to, to say we are not going to do it. Those projections we are very positive we're going to achieve. And that's why we have decided at this time around that, you know what, we can't allow this to continue. When we are told that the government is looking at uh, uh, 720 
billion deficit in the budget something must be done if you allow demonstrations to continue you will not get there if you allow the demonstrations to block and stop business from running you will not get there and that is a fact however with the efforts that are being put i earlier on told you about the issue which we we, we must discuss teachers are being employed the tax is being improved in what way we're looking at what is it that we have to do let us stop borrowing beyond our capacity let us do this so that we don't extend and 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 and, and put ourselves in a position where we will only be collecting and paying out collecting paying out we are not injecting anything to the economy the agriculture sector is also equally going to support this situation because where i come from we've planted maize and we've said which is actually a fact now this is not something that we are we, we are speculating we are lucky that gods and, 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 and uh, the, the weatherman decided to support the effort by the kenya kwanza government we have had rains all through in the next two months we're going to be doing very well in terms of harvesting of maize and other agricultural products that way it will bring down the cost of living it will avail sufficient not not necessarily sufficient but at least some extra cash in the pockets of very many farmers who did not carry uh, souvenirs in their heads instead they went to work it will also enhance you know a, a, the entire cost of living hopefully the next two months will be better but of course i know in areas where people worked in places where people did not definitely it's going to be a problem we have got the enhance uh, when 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 we have uh, I'm, i'm looking at the i've talked about agriculture education the creation job creation spills over beyond an individual as i've said that way it will support the economy and those projections might be achieved should we allow the government of the day at least to run the affairs and plant as it has been projected thank you for a moment the issue of sugar uh, not sugar hey did i say sugar yeah, yes. uh, sugar industry uh we've seen the government now has suspended also the operations of, of the millers mm. to give time for farmers to grow their canes as well uh but from your own assessment do you think this is a genuine move there are there no canes at all uh from the millers or this is a window period now to also have to, import, to import, import sugar from outside uh, d3 uh, well i don't know but from outside kenya you know but genuinely there has been you know, a drought let, let me tell we, you we, we, we don't have sugar on the ground as it is right now we don't have cans you know, let me tell you we, we do you think this is a salutary we, move from the government we have two problems which are very well captured in in somalia adage one other is the one i told you that the camel stolen by the owner can never be found mm-hmm. <laughs> a nation that's under state capture by the leadership of that country <laughs> will never be able to progress <laughs> the other one is that uh, uh, there was a there was a, a lady goes into labor and in our side when a lady goes into labor those old days when there was no medicine people are willing also to dig the graves because she might die in child, childbirth so she had a kind of a grown up kids who are 12 years 13 years old sometimes late in the night the child was born and everybody was ululating and people were very happy and then the son said you people are celebrating this rather too early as long as my father is around we'll have this problem every other year <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> for as long as Raila will be in the politics of this country <laughs> uh, this one will be <laughs> we'll have one big crisis after the other political crisis mm. for as long as the state captured by the political leadership in this country we'll always have an economic crisis mm-hmm. <laughs> you get my point yes <laughs> the economy will always be, they will always have rampant poverty pockets and pockets because <laughs> when the leader is running <laughs> looking for money <laughs> instead of you know let me tell you do you know why um, seven is Uganda is a very stable country despite the fact that that man has been there for how many years almost 40 years now yeah. because he does not engage in politics and in, in, in business mm. are you aware of that he has no business his business is a, those long horn cows there <laughs> yeah surely <laughs> the, the ankole banyankole yeah. he the man does is not looking for money you look for leadership you don't look for money but if you have to compete with your farmers if you have to compete with your industries industrialists 
if you have to be everywhere yourself and you're in political leadership in the country, it's a problem. So we need to come into a situation, Segei, in, 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 in which the moment you get appointed to a position of leadership in this country from the presidents, all the way down to the ministers, they got to put their own investments in a blind trust, declare their wealth, and get out of business. Because you cannot compete with the same people that you're supposed to regulate. You're supposed to build the economy, create employment, take all these young men and women out of poverty. But you're looking for the same money yourself. You're looking for the same thing. You're supposed to be bringing this SMEs, SMEs, the farmers, everybody. We have to be out there on a cash program promoting every sector of our economy. So that the piston, you can, the piston is firing, is it? Uh, <laughs> the, the, the engine is firing from all the four pistons. The cylinders. A, a cylinder, sorry, the four cylinders. Yes. And uh, basically what you, what you mean is that we have to have all hands on the deck. All hands on the deck. But then, when uh, the top opposition leader is all the time looking for money, and the top what you call government leaders are also looking for money, and business opportunities and ways to corner the economy by you know when there's always a shortage in this ah this is an opportunity to to import these things and, and 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 make a you know make a kill on it then we have a problem in the country so in a sense i think we have a more deeper endemic historical pathological problem that needs to be treated right do we and that's we've, we've gotten what you call the competition authority yeah, we we do have antitrust laws but they're not that elaborate uh, 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 you, you know, they're not that elaborate. We need to deal with a lot of these things. Thank you. Conflict of interest. There's a piece of legislation coming on conflict of interest. I don't know if you know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sponsored by, uh, yes. to, the, to National Assembly, not the Senate. Yes, in the National Assembly, yes. I mean, the Senate, Senate is confined to what you call the county's issues. But the Senate is the House of Union. It protects the unity of this country. And the unity is, comes from all those counties. You know what I mean, the 40, 47 counties. So when it comes to these pieces of legislation, and the past also, other than the distribution but the conflict the of, criteria. Of, 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 of the conflict of interest bill cuts across both because this That's is right. to make absolutely, sure absolutely absolutely yeah. absolutely so i think we need we need mungatana we need to we need to look at this country afresh mm. afresh and see how we can solve our problems mm. let's not go and solve the symptoms let's solve the problem the Thank source you. of the problem and the disease itself we, we are supposed to be winding up so also the mandamano bill is coming your way uh, Mandamano, this country uh, should Mandamano? avoid Mandamano, let me tell you. No, but, but the bill? Yeah. Mandamano, Mandamano is not good for our economy and future of this country. By the I'm way. asking about the legislation. Yeah, the piece of legislation. Of course, yes. We'll, we'll see it. You know, always, always. Uh, or you as a speaker, you don't want to. Uh, yeah, of course, it would be, it would be unfair to. Uh, it, it, <laughs> no, the rules are very clear. You do not, you do not anticipate uh, debate. Yeah, you know, the rules are very clear. The rules are very clear. The thing is, let, about, let the this proposed bill is not a new bill. It's only that uh, it's now coming in the 13th parliament. Actually, in the 12th parliament, it was there. It was a committee's bill. And I used to sit in that committee, the Committee on Administration and National Security. But then the bill expired with the 12th parliament, and then the member has taken it. So what we are saying is, when you look at what has been proposed in that bill, and I think that other time we debated up to almost, committee, we did committee, um, uh, 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 we call public participation for the bill. We got ideas from the, the people. I can tell you for sure, even this bill, I don't see it going far, but it's good it gets an attempt. Because what it's trying to do is to say that if you organize demonstrations, then you take the responsibility in case anything happens. And there are quite a number of gaps. Some of the gaps is, for example, in a situation where you are leading up a peaceful demonstration, and then the police comes in and attacks the demonstrators. Now, in that case, because it's external now mm -hmm. uh, interference, do you still take uh, uh, responsibility for that? The other thing is they are saying, anytime you lead a demonstration, if you look at the bill, because that time we had serious discussions. So, so some of things that, uh, could be said theoretically, but implementation would be very tricky. And then the other question is, demonstrations are allowed for in, uh, in the constitution. And I think in this constitution, there's no way you would say demonstrations are supposed to be, they are, they are actually expected to be physical demonstrations. The question is, why don't we have peaceful demonstrations in Kenya the way we have in other countries? If we answer that question, there will be no need for this bill.
but you see we are we are hiding our our heads in sand to avoid to avoid that that debate the question is why why are we not able to conduct our demonstrations the way they are conducting in other countries and people are able to present their petitions to the government or whatever office and they go home right. because as Farah says there are other interested issues Thank outside you. just a normal demonstration right. I just want to bring a lot of issues as we're winding up. So, person, I will be opposing yeah, this thing. I, I want to also to hear from the ad hoc committee chair of uh, the Shakahola um, investigation, uh, Honorable Mungatana, because we, we've had also legislators uh, raising concerns regarding the appearances of some of uh, uh, police officers who are, we are supposed to be interrogating, that uh, the CS is the one manipulating this appearances of these <coughs> police officers to come and be interrogated by you as a committee and the the legislators are saying there is a duck underbelly towards this what is the motivation why is the government hiding or what is the government hiding that is what honorable richard onyonka is asking uh, <laughs> you know first of all as a chair of the committee i i have to to give a very balanced uh, so i'm not speaking government or opposition here but the fact of the matter is some of the people who have made those allegations on the press are not attending meetings okay so and all of us here we know that uh, there are people who just don't take their committee work seriously but maybe they like harambees they like funerals they like other things they don't come to, to committees so we take some of the comments with so that was a pinch. Was not raised during the committee meeting. It was not. It is, those are things people, uh, you, you know, they are just talking outside. The minister came, and as the chair, I was the first person to ask. Uh, we wanted this and this and the other person to come. The minister made his case, and I don't know why you are not also talking about it, because the minister say some of the people there are suspect some uh, the people you are calling are suspects, some are witnesses, some are people of persons of interest. So we, we, I am here to answer all questions and uh, in the event, after my own, uh, you know, satisfying this committee, in the event that you have any extra questions and you really still need those people, you are free, you have unfettered power under the constitution to call them and you can recall me, you can call any, the, the committee has those kinds of powers. So we went into that session and questions were put by all the members, every person, opposition, government, government opposition. And uh, at the end of it, we, 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 we have not been satisfied. In fact, those allegations, because it's a live proceeding, the allegations that anyone is being covered, prevented, government is hiding anything. Thank you. The, the allegations are just that, allegations. They're not truthful. Thank you. In my opinion, I think we are going very well so far. Right. And maybe just to encourage you, I can see there was a copy of uh, The Guardian. Uh, this issue of people seeing heaven and uh, being led by the clergy, if my director may just pick it up, I just read a snippet of it here. This was a Catholic chaplain who sexually abused uh, a Louisiana student and uh, students and was jailed for five good years. If my director may just pick it up in full, I'll just read a bit of it. I, I found it interesting with what we are going on with the horror here. And this is Patrick Watt Ginny's plea and sentence on when this came after both of his victims strongly advocated for a harsher punishment. One victim who was present described how Watted me spent time grooming him in the mid-1990s. And he says that the victim said Whitting told him he could help him gain entry to heaven then took him to a rectory to fondle his genitals. Watting also used his fingers to rape the victim while, of course, masturbating. And uh, this is just an abuse of religion and how we can see egregious people who've been given those powers and uh, they're taking advantage of our little children just to uh, encourage you as well. But even as we're winding up and you're giving your brief comment, we have Senator Sakaja says that preachers in town should be taxed a thousand shillings every day for preaching. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't agree. I, I don't agree. 
Farah Mali, what do you think about it? They, they barely, they barely collect even that as an offer. Yeah, 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 in a day. How can you charge uh, those preachers in Aga Khan and uh, and uh, Uru Park now is closed and uh, and uh, what what do you call that? Uh, Jivanji. Uh, yeah, a thousand shillings a day. Hmm? I don't know. I think are we are we that desperate for taxes? No, I think I think uh, <laughs> if only that money were to be put into good use, I would have no problem with every Kenyan paying tax. What uh, I would say is what I said a while back, that we would want to enhance, uh, improve the trust deficit that is in Kenyans with a, the government of the day or any public institution. If we have that trust okay. built back, we would have no problem taxing everybody. I mean, they are collecting from the public. They are collecting from people who are giving. They should also then be willing to at least <laughs> pay back to... E it's, it's more than that in the bar. They do a lot of money. Okay. Uh, Let's is that my closing? Okay. Well, allow me, allow me 30 seconds then to say. Yeah. I would really hope and wish that going forward, beginning this, beginning now and running through, we should begin having conversations about serious issues to do with bringing down the cost of living, job creation of uh, our youth and Kenyans generally. We would love to speak about how can we enhance agriculture how can we enhance productivity how can we commercialize our agricultural sector thank how you. can we enhance the cost of production thank in you. order for us to bring down the cost of living we can only do that if we speak to the issues the ball and not the demos and thank you. the archaic uh, plans that Th the odm are planning. thank you thank you thank all of us again mm -hmm. that's your, your closing remarks my closing remarks are that uh, our country is going to survive the threat of Mandamano. And nobody, nobody in this country, even if you think you are a god or what, there is a higher god and this nation, Kenya, is not uh, a, a mistake. It is here and it is going to develop. Whether you will sabotage it or not, this country is going to develop. And we want Kenyans to go back to production and protect your production. If someone is coming to harm you, be firm. Akuna, akuna kuogopana tena. You be firm so that you can continue with your production. That farm, that farm is tena. what needs to be... <laughs> be firm. <laughs> Determine what it is. Yeah. Right. Horbo yeah. Far, your closing remarks? Actually, I think uh, we, we are going through some very difficult times. And uh, I, I get extremely worried by the actions of this so-called extremist religious uh, uh, groupings, which is both a political and an economic, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, of, of organized crime in the sense. I mean, what we see with Al-Shabaab, for example, it's not a political organization, by the way. It's, it's not a religious organization. It's a, it's a political organization. It's a mafia of some kind. And it's been pushed out of Somalia now by the popular revolt by the masses themselves. So my worry is that the kind of demonstrations we have out here, the problems we have right now of poverty and uh, unemployment, and then put that into that mix because they've already come into our country. And by the way, majority of them are not even in Somali, indigenous Somalis. You'll find every ethnic community, you'll find Luyas, Luos, Kambas, uh, you know, uh, Taitas, and everybody. Mm -hmm. so, so what I'm trying to say is that, let's be very careful. I hope our own intelligence security machineries are going to be, you know, be up to the task to make sure that this Mandamano is not used, is not used as an avenue for those terror organized criminal gangs who are mafias in their own rights Thank you, to, be, to, to take advantage Thank of you. our country. Horrible, lastly. Thank you, Dibal. Dibal, all of us, irrespective of our uh, political divide, we have one motherland called Kenya. And we love this country. This is not time for chest thumping. It's not time for hardline stance. It's not time for issuing threats. It's not time for saying Jaribu Wone. It's time for us to engage in dialogue for the sake of our motherland. Thank you. Honorable Mukali. I really do appreciate you coming through as well. In the Parliament Kutui Central, Senator Danson Mungatana, thank you for coming through. Senator of Tana River and Senator Hilary Sigay, the Senator of Bomet, thank you. Honorable Farah Malim, Member of Parliament.
of course, uh, Dadab, thank you. And a member also of the speaker as, as panel, we really do appreciate your penetrative insights this morning. And we hope, of course, uh, looking forward that uh, we shall come up with a happy medium that these three days of uh, protest uh, will not happen. It's not the desire of any Kenyans to see their property lost or their lives lost as well. We pray that uh, a good uh, solution, an immediate one, might be coming to the fore soon. Thank you for your valid company. News Diaries up next.